Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a CIA slash intelligence agency build, taking some inspiration from the MI6 building on the south bank of the Thames in London, and also some inspiration from Langley Falls in Virginia, where the CIA is based. Thank you for voting on the poll for this on the channel. If you guys haven't checked out the community tab, we will start posting up more polls there so you guys can help me decide on what content starts to appear on the channel. But let's get started today, shall we? First of all, what we're going to come in and do is grab ourselves any arterial road. I'm going to use the industrial roads for this just because of the kind of vibe that they have. We're going to start drawing out by an initial distance of 10 tiles to start with. And then we're going to switch into a toll booth to grab a two way small. And then we're going to tether this onto the end so it snaps straight ahead. This isn't essential if you don't have the DLC that adds in the toll booths. You can ignore this step. However, it does provide some nice security gate vibes. Moving on from this, they're going to come out by another distance of 10 tiles. And then we're going to switch down to our smaller roads. Again, any road here will work, but just for consistency, I'm going to run with a small industry road. At the end of our industrial arterial, we're going to come out by 10 each side. Now these are just supporting roads for what we're going to place here today. Once we have this T-shape in, we're then going to come ahead and move over by two snap nodes from the middle point. So we'll go from one to two. And then we're going to draw up by ten and then do the same on this side again. Now what we're looking to generate here is some car park zoning. So we're looking for this pattern right here, okay? A two by four zoning, which we will set up the district for momentarily. Once we have these two supporting roads in, we are then going to draw across a road across the top, making sure that we maintain this four deep tar distance between the top of the T and the road that we've just drawn in. And then we're going to come into our unique buildings and we are going to grab the official park, which is from the tier three. And we're going to place this straight within this space right here. Okay. And we're then going to re repeat the pattern either side. So when I measure this in, we know that we're at a distance of 180. Come up again. And then draw that in. And then we'll also do the same on this side as well, out by 180. And then across and out by 180 and then across so we're looking to kind of form a centralized plaza here right this is what we're trying to do to help form some more important assets around them then going to come into our districts tool and we're going to paint out a district over this area so we can set it up as a local and organic produce specialization from the green cities dlc come in and grab that apply it to the district and then what we're looking to happen here is we're going to start drawing in these two by four zonings in this style. Okay. Nice and easy. And what we're looking to generate here is an asset called the Edison Hypercharger. I'll kind of leave the game running here and you can just see how long they take to come in. Um, it's not too long. There is quite a few assets within this pool, but just keep deleting them until they come in and eventually you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. It's nice to have all these car parts kind of focused around this nice centralized asset. You don't have to use the official park, of course, you can switch this out for any other kind of plaza or park asset that you like. But I think the official park works quite nicely in this context. Coming back into our build now, we're going to come into the police department and then move across to our content creator packs. And we are going to grab the intelligence agency. Just a quick note, if you are missing any of the unique buildings that we're using today or the content creator stuff, there is a link down in the description below to Instant Gaming where you can pick up a lot of the City Skylines DLCs for pretty cheap. So if you're missing some of them and have been thinking about picking them up, you can help support the channel and get yourself some new DLC. So we're going to place the Intelligence Agency right at the head of this plaza here. So this is kind of what we're looking right from the bird's eye view. Then we're going to come back into our small roads and from this initial T shape that we drew out at the bottom here, we're going to drag this road and we're going to come out by a distance of 30. Then we're going to come into our emergency services buildings. We're going to come across into the disaster services tab and we're going to grab the disaster response unit, which is going to fit in really nicely up along here. Now we're going to orientate this building. So we're leaving a distance of two tiles between this road that we've just drawn in and this road that we're placing it on. The disaster response unit is a really good looking asset. Um, if you're not playing without natural disasters on, then it's obviously kind of useless and it's very much just for kind of the aesthetic. But the steps out front and the pillars works really nicely kind of facing into the central plaza that we're working with today. So it's up to you if you want to use it. If you don't have the pack, again, just choose a different asset that you like. Then from the corner of this left-hand box where we have our car parks, we're now going to draw a box 
around the intelligence agency at the top, leaving a distance of four tiles on the sides and two around the back. Then we come through the road that's going to run parallel up against the disaster response unit, come back into our police department stuff, and then we're going to place in the police helicopter depot. And we're going to place this on that road right there. Then we can draw in a road behind it, parallel with the one that we've just drawn in by a distance of 750. And then we can just flip the asset around and then take out this road that we drew in here. Now the reason we're doing this is that the police helicopter depot and the natural disaster response unit pair really nicely together. They have a lot of similar tree assets. Of course the HD card to indicate a helicopter landing pad. And it's just a nice little paired asset. So nice little combination of assets if you want to get involved with them. You can configure these in a couple of different orientations. So have a little play with them and see what you think of them. So we'll now start to join these two road networks together. We'll start to bring them down. And we want to bring a road directly behind the natural disaster response unit. Just so it helps to box in the asset. It's not essential, but it'll look nice come the end. And then we can trim off the little bits that we don't need towards the side there. Okay. Another little shout out here. If you do want to find another uh, emergency services asset to use. Um, lots of these things will work nicely. Uh, the weather radar is a, a really good looking asset. So we can come in with a dirt road here. Just to help change up the, the texture just a tiny bit. And then we'll draw this in up and against the police helicopter depot. Come back into those buildings and then we'll grab the weather radar and place it right here. Again, really nice looking asset. If you're playing with natural disasters off, this won't really serve you a function. But it's a nice aesthetic change into the build. And also, I don't think it's an asset you often see. So it's nice to see it appear in a nice little unique build like this. Then once we box this off, we're going to come back into our unique buildings. Come into the content creator packs. Now that you've got a lot of different options here as to what asset you want to include around the right hand border of this small complex. A lot of the high tech content creator buildings work really nicely here, especially the nanotechnology center and the research center, all of which will centralize really nicely with your car parks. So if you're looking for an excuse to use one of these things, then absolutely come ahead into one of these and take your pick. I'd probably go for the nanotechnology center. Other assets that will also work nicely in this build are the larger buildings towards the end of the campus DLC stuff. Use the School of Law, the School of Medicine, School of Science, Tourism and Travel, School of Engineering, Police Academy not so much, and then the School of Economics as well alongside the Environmental Studies and not so much the School of Education. So if you wanted to include one of these larger more important assets here, that do work really nicely in the build, then you will have to integrate a campus area into this. Although you can just extend the campus area out if your campus is far away, and then drop one of these assets in here if you wanted to. So the configuration of your key assets all centralized around this central square is very much up to you. And will obviously depend on what DLCs and content creator packs that you do and don't have. Because this is such a unique style of build, um, an intelligent agency, you have to be very specific with the assets that come in. But you can get very creative with it and it's a nice way to use up some of those quirkier unique buildings that you might otherwise struggle to find a place for in your city. So coming back to our bird's eye view we're going to come back to our small roads and then we're going to draw up from this road marker right here. You can see it with our road guideline and we have these blue circles. These are referring to intervals of 10 within the road. So we'll come to the middle one and then we'll come out by another 10 and then we're going to come out again by a distance of 20. Okay. Come back into our emergency services within the natural disasters tab and we're going to go ahead and grab the deep space radar which will place one tile away from the edge of the road which will of course allow us to come through and box this in with a nice little industrial road like this okay again really important looking surveillance asset whether or not you want to include it it does make the build quite over the top and if you are planning to place this within the downtown setting like the MI6 building in London, this probably won't look right. So if you're going rural, deep space radar is a great addition. If you're going high density within the downtown, probably avoid this one. Now coming back to our bird's eye view, we're going to come back to the right hand side of the initial T that we drew in. And then we're then going to bring this up to align with that road that we just placed in with the deep space radar. Okay. Then we're going to come into the space that we have between our third key plaza asset and the deep space radar 
and just begin to draw in some smaller road against road network action. And what we're going to do with this space is just accommodate in some little smaller office zone ins, all right? And then just by having this smaller internal box here will give us some nice office park vibes and we can decorate this out with nice fencing and whatnot. So we can wait for our office asset to come in here. Again, depending on what assets you do and don't have, will dictate what building will come in here. If you are playing with Pot the Growables, of course, you can be a lot more customizable as to what comes in. But just give it a little bit of time and see what you fancy. See what blends in with whatever other key assets you've chosen to sit around your central plaza. I think I'm fairly happy with this asset right here. I think it works nicely with the intelligence agency and also with the natural disaster response unit over in the distance there as well. Coming into finer detailing for this thing, in terms of the kind of inner road network, our park fence is gonna work really nicely and we are gonna to stick to grid snapping for this. So we're just gonna come up with these spaces we have left between the natural disaster response unit. You can take them into these spaces as well if you want and bring them down in multiple directions. I think in this space right here between the two buildings, I'm going to use dirt path and then I'm going to come through with some different fence this time and maybe use some oil industry fence in here as well. Again, just snapping into my grid and then just run this alongside each of the paths, okay? We can then choose a repeated tree pattern to introduce into this area and again, I think what I'm quite a big fan of is something quite small and modern looking. So for the modded game without anything from the workshop, a repeated sugar maple line will work really nicely up and alongside these fences. You don't have to run the trees of course, this is just a nice way to fill out some more of that dead space, but it can also look quite nice when you see it in a really heavily repeated pattern such as this, okay? It's gonna help fill out those areas and allow people to move around a little easier as well. In terms of the decoration for around the front of the intelligence agency or whatever asset you've placed in here, of course if it is a different asset you might have different spacings available either side of, of this building right here but I'm just going to come through with some nice part life path to border around the edge of it okay and then draw it in at certain points so people can hook through Again, if you find that you may be getting too much tree design in one space don't forget just to switch down to the version without decorations and it will just take a little bit of that spice away if you find it's just getting maybe a little bit too much and too over the top and again, coming back to my park fence where we're kind of up front and centre here, I'm just going to draw in some more patterns within these spaces. Super simple and basic. Of course, if you want to fill these spaces out with some buildings, this is also a nice opportunity to run in with some of your office zoning. And then we'll move just place in a couple, a little pink tree number twos here, okay? And that's going to give us a nice little symmetrical design outside of the intelligence agency with the plaza, the car parks, the paths and the fencing and the trees. And then coming into our kind of office asset space here, I'm going to run with more oil industry fence around the edge of this. Again, it's not obviously essential, absolutely just for decoration purposes. And then we just bring it up to about here. And then we can come in again with some more path designs if we want to fill out those dead areas. And when we do get some small texture tearing, again, it's a nice opportunity to bring in some of your tree palette that you're using in this area. And then for spaces like this, again, you can come through with more industry zoning if you like. Maybe just introduce a smaller office asset in here. And then we can then feed through with some more of those dirt path designs just to help people get through from side to side. They won't get a huge amount of use. It's very much just for decoration purposes. Again, any fence will work. But if we look at the oil industry fence, it does have that kind of spiky top and does allow it to kind of have that more secure vibe, right? Okay, there's a couple of different things you can do with these. And again, because this is such a unique style of build, don't forget to be coming into your emergency services stuff again. I'm just browsing through some of these things. Uh, the large emergency shelter will actually fit in perfectly up alongside um, your kind of centralized asset here if you wanted to get it in. Equally as much, kind of the short radio mass is also a nice looking asset that works well with this build. And it's a nice excuse to use up some of those emergency service assets that, again, you don't really use all that often. In terms of decorating the front of this thing and indeed around the boundaries, I'm going to surround the entire thing with a big line of oil industry fence, leaving a distance of one tile between the road and the fence line itself. And then we're just going to draw this in 
all the way around on each side up until that toll booth if you did include it at the start of the build. As you can see, I'm currently not syncing power through because this map isn't functional. If you are building this rural and you don't have something to sync through your power, then of course include your power lines. But if you don't want the power lines, then of course the earthquake sensors from the Natural Disasters DLC will help to sync power through from area to area. And you can repeat these either side and it will then jump through from the toll booth up into the actual build itself. Okay. And then in terms of the outside of the perimeter, and you can bring in more repeated tree patterns if you like, it's entirely up to you. But you can just kind of get a sense of how drawing in the entire thing with a oil industry fence just gives it that kind of extra security, intelligence agency vibe. You know, you wouldn't just be able to walk into this place. It's very secure. And yeah, you can kind of just get a sense as to how it begins to look as we emerge into this place now, right? Very nice. And if you're taking kind of inspiration from Langley Falls, where the CIA is based, it's very kind of rural. It's got lots of forest around it. And of course, those fencing. However, if you're looking more MI6 in London, it is right in the heart of the city and is essentially just kind of one building with a couple of car parks. So it's up to you kind of which style you want to take this in and it really does depend on where you're placing this within your map. If you are within your downtown, of course having a real thick forest around this thing might look a little weird, but you can easily just integrate your skyline up and against this if you wanted to. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video today, give us a sign by leaving a like on the video. Equally as much, if you haven't enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. And if you are enjoying the content, maybe consider subscribing to the channel too. Really unique style build today, and a lot of the DLCs and content creator packs are important if you're looking to replicate something of this style and vibe. Uh, the base game assets will struggle to kind of put this together. But lots of kind of government style buildings, especially the disaster response unit, the intelligence agency and the school of economics really work nicely together all focused around some central plaza designs and also some of the natural disaster deep space radar and mass stuff help contribute to the build as well if you feel like i have missed out any assets that would have worked nicely in today's video please do feel free to throw them in the comments below so myself and others can get ideas and suggestions but otherwise i will show up and i will leave it there i want to thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day Thank you.